Okay, this is a demo to show the FS NAS volume replication functionality. So what we've got is we've got a NAS volume on our local FS system called CLA test with a single share called CLA share. So what I'm going to do is I am going to map that as uh, my H drive on this local machine and you see there's already a file called PICO1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate that NAS volume to my DRFS. I'm going to bring the volume online in DR. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to reverse the replication. I'm going to replicate back to the original source, bring the volume online, and uh, go from there. Um, so first process would be to enable the replication for that NAS volume. So we're going to replicate to uh, FS02. Uh, we're going to need to create a NAS volume. I know the size is 500 gig. It's a limitation at the moment. It doesn't automatically enter the size, so you need to know the size if you want to match it up. Same NAS volume name, CLA test, and that's going to go ahead and create that NAS volume. Then we can select that and the replication relationship has been established. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a snapshot. Normally, you'd have a snapshot schedule doing this, but as it's a test environment, just going to set one up and set the expiration to expire in a few hours from now. Okay, now we're going to go back to the replication tab, tasks, start manual replication, and we're going to manually replicate. So what that process is going to do is it's going to replicate any snapshots that we've got locally and any data over to our replication partner, which in this case is instance O2. So if we go over to O2 and if we go down, we can see we've got our NAS volume and the replication process is currently active. Currently there's no snapshots and there are no shares, which is what we'd expect. Just going to do a refresh. In a couple of seconds, that should be online. What I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to open up a connection to the NAS uh, instance 2. So 172.20.92. So we're going to drop an IP address here. 92. Dot 150. And it's going to prompt me for some credentials because this is a lab environment. And there's no domain AD connectivity. So we've got a series of shares. Um, what we'll notice when we replicate and we bring online is we can bring our share on, but we're not quite ready for that yet. So if we go back to the replication process and we can see that's now complete. And on the DR site, you can now see that we've got the snapshots to match. So on the source side, we've got the snapshot we've taken manually and the replication snap. And we've got the same thing in DR. So what we want to do now is on the production site, go to the replication tab and we need to promote the destination. What that does is it brings the destination volume online and it also disables the replication process. Once that's complete, we no longer need this replication relationship, so we can go ahead and delete that. Now that there are two independent volumes, um, we should now find on the DR site that we still don't have any SIF shares. So what we need to do is go restore volume config, make sure SIF shares is enabled. And what that will do is it will browse the volume the data within the volume and it will create any shares that exist within that volume. So now if we return to the prompt we have here, if we do refresh, you'll see there's a new uh, share, which is a replicated share. And we're going to map that up as the I drive. So now we'll find on our machine we've got an F, we've got a H and an I with the same content. Now we don't need the uh, H anymore because we're going to start using in DR. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to delete that SIF share. Uh, any users uh, that were pointing at that would be offline at this point. So that is now gone. And now the only access we have to our data is via uh, our iDrive, which is our DR site. And now you can see that the H is gone. We should be able to edit uh, the files in uh, DR. And we'll just uh, do a pretty picture there. And we'll create a second file and we'll call that pick. Okay. Okay, so now we've made some changes in DR, and we'll go ahead and we'll take a manual snapshot. And we'll, we'll enable expiration, and again, a couple of hours from now. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set up replication in reverse. So we're going to replicate from um, 
from uh, DR. Uh, bear with me a second. I've taken a snapshot on the wrong side. Delete that. We're going to uh, take a snapshot on the side we've made the changes. Okay, so now we're taking a snapshot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to enable that's volume replication. So we're going to replicate from DR back to the original source. And we're going to choose our test volume. Now that's available because it's no longer part of the replication. The reason I delete the replication schedule and the replication relationship was because if we hadn't done that, the volume would have been seen as a replication source from the original replication and wouldn't have allowed us to select it. We've now established a relationship uh, in reverse, so we're now replicating to CLA, uh, so to FS uh, A600DR, which is in fact our source. And now we're going to do a manual replication, which will replicate the snapshot we've made taken manually, which is manual 02, and it will also replicate the changes that we've made over to our original source. So if we give that uh, 30 seconds or so, when that becomes idle, you know it's complete. If we go to the snapshots area, if we do a refresh here, you'll see the snapshots appear. Uh, the replication is still active. Okay, that's now complete. And um, you'll now see that we've got manual 02, which is the snapshot I created manually. Okay, so what we need to do now is go back to the source. Now it's important to do this from the source. Go to the replication tab and we want to promote the destination. The destination in this case is now FSA600DR, which was our original source. So we're going to promote that. We're going to make that a volume writable in DR. And when that completes, we're also going to remove the rep replication relationship between those volumes to isolate them and we can make them to normal NAS volumes. Then we're going to do a right click, we're going to restore volume config. At this point, it's worth noticing that there's no SIF shares because we removed it. We're going to restore the volume config, which will recreate the SIF shares. And what we'll find here is in our environment, we are now able to see our H drive is back. We are then going to set up replication in reverse, re-protect ourselves. Um, the right cluster uh, and at this point we can see our CLA test volume is available and we're going to establish the relationship. Okay and now we'll find on our original source that our file that we uh, had previously has maintained the changes and our second file exists. Our DR volume is available. Let me know if I'm going to need that share. which will remove access. Okay, thank you very much for watching.